the Vietnam Memorial here, saluting all the grand veterans that we didn't welcome home when they came. We finally welcomed them home now. to reflect, to reflect on what that man meant, and those men meant, and those, and those, and that man meant, and the man who stood down on those stairs and gave his life for everyone's right to have a dream and smoke and eat their dream. That's what the reflection is all about. these great men did. Why did they give their lives? And all of them did. George Washington. He was a general. He fought and fought and fought and fought. And when it was falling apart and they needed the Constitution, they came riding to his front door. And they knocked on his door. And he answered it. And they said, General, we will not survive. It's falling apart. We need you at the Constitutional Convention. His response was, have I not yet done enough for my country? He closed the door. He reflected, mounted his foot, and gave yet another part of his life because it was the right thing to do. So what did these great people give their lives for? They gave it for the American experiment. And that's what this is, an experiment. It's not just a country, it's an idea that man can rule himself. That's the American experiment. to make today. Do we, Americans that live today, surrounded by giants who gave it all, do we today say the experiment cannot work? Man must be ruled by someone. It does not end here. It shall not end now. It shall not end in my generation, in your generation. It is up to us. Our documents, our 
most famous speeches are American scripture. And they are alive today just as any other scripture is. It speaks to us from the past. If I, if I may, if I may share with you the Gettysburg Address and ask you if it doesn't apply to today. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now, now we are engaged in a great war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield. In the hotel that I'm staying at, I found out, the, is the hotel where Dr. Martin Luther King finished his speech. But it's also a place where someone else wrote something. The Battle Hymn of the Republic, written here, in a hotel just down the street, because you could see over the buildings at that time, they weren't so high. And you could see, and they watched the battle. That's where the Battle Hymn of the Republic, here, was written. This is a great battlefield, filled with warriors on each side. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that this nation might live. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men and women, living and dead who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never be forgotten what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work that they have thus so far nobly advanced. It is rather for us here to be dedicated now to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause which they gave their last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall have not died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. America is at a crossroads, and we must decide, are those words that Abraham Lincoln spoke, and they have no relevance or meaning on us today? America is at a crossroads, and today we must decide, who are we? What is it we believe? We must advance or perish. I choose advance. After the Gettysburg Address, go in and read. I invite you today, go in and read the second inaugural. Abraham Lincoln found God in the stars of Gettysburg. He was baptized and gave the second inaugural. He looked to God and set men free. America. America awakens again. It's the same story throughout history, all of mankind's history. Man finds himself in slavery, and then 
someone appears to wake America up. It was George Whitfield in the 1740s, an imperfect man, a man who actually at the same time was preaching individual rights, brought more slavery to this land. But it was his words that inspired an American generation. They were children at the time. They grew into be John Adams, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. It happens the same way it has since the burning bush. Moses, freedom, and then they forget it. They wander until they remember. God, he always has it. And then they begin in trust. Do you know what kind of trust there must have been? If you were in bondage in ancient Egypt, and you were crying out to the Almighty, send us, send us someone to free us. Thank you. 